What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the most powerful ARM-based Android TV box slash Linux mini PC that I've ever had the chance to test on the channel. But before we take a look at it, I do want to give a quick mention to the NVIDIA Shield. So this has been my go-to Android TV box for a long time. It handles emulation really well, 4K video playback. And ever since this was released, it's received regular updates. But it's been a very long time and that Tegra X1 is getting a little long in the tooth. A lot of people have been searching for something to replace it, and I think I've found it here. This is definitely an NVIDIA Shield Pro Destroyer, and it's known as the Mikotronics R58X. I just want to say, this will play GameCube, it will play Wii, it will play PS2, and this thing is an absolute monster when it comes to ARM performance. It even handles 8K video, and it might not look like much, but we do have a lot of I.O. here. But before we take a look at the box itself, let's see what came with it. From what I've seen so far, these are going to be packaged up at around $249, and that's kind of the starting price here for the 8GB model. But you're going to get your power supply, a couple HDMI cables, because this does support HDMI out and HDMI in. We also get a 2.4GHz remote and our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antennas. Mikotronics is offering this in a few different colors, but I kind of wish it came with a vertical stand. This is more uh, set up to kind of mount to the back of your TV or maybe just set underneath your TV. But I do have plans for this to kind of set it up in a different style case because it is highly configurable. And when it comes to I.O., we've got a lot to work with here. Up front, we've got two 3.5mm audio jacks, one for audio in, one for audio out. A full-size USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, and we've got two USB Type-C ports. Now, these are labeled as Type-C and Debug, but I've been able to get data through both of them with the operating system I have installed here. Not much going on around the sides here. We don't have any kind of ventilation, and it's a very plain Jane little case, as you can see here, which definitely kept the cost down. But around back, we've got our power input. We also have two full-size HDMI ports. Now, one of these is video out, one of them's video in for video switching. We could actually plug something like an Xbox into this and just switch directly on the unit itself. And we could actually record that footage if we need to. It also has a full-size display port and dual gigabit ethernet ports. Getting inside of the unit is pretty easy. We've got four screws on the front. We can slide that top right off. You can see that this is a passively cooled CPU here, and I haven't hit thermal throttle with it, but adding a fan to this should be quite easy. It does support an M.2 SSD and SATA drives. We can add one SATA here, one M.2, and we've got internal eMMC 5.1 storage already. But what makes this thing so interesting are the specs. So it's known as the Mikotronics R58X. For the CPU, we've got the new Rockchip RK3588, this is an octa-core ARM CPU. We've got four A76 cores at 2.4 gigahertz, but one of those does boost up to 2.6, and we've also got four A55 cores at 1.8. The GPU is very powerful in this when it comes to Android boxes or Linux SBCs. We've got the Mali G610 MP4. This is a newer GPU, and it was codenamed Odin. 8 gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM here, and I do think they're going to be selling these with up to 16. This one here has 64 gigabytes of internal eMMC 5.1 storage, but as we saw, we can add an M.2 drive or a SATA drive, and this supports Android 12 right out of the box. It also has Google Play installed, and they're working on Linux variants for this, Ubuntu and Debian. So yeah, I'm super excited to show off the performance here. I've got Android 12 installed. We're going to run some native Android games, some emulators, we'll run some benchmarks, and then you can get a feel for how powerful this thing really is. All right, so here it is. We've got a very basic layout here, and it's great for a bigger screen. You can always install a third-party launcher if you want to, and to navigate this, you can use the included remote, you can use a mouse and keyboard, a game controller, it's really up to you. This does have Google Play installed, and this is something I haven't seen on these Arcade 3588 units yet. Definitely makes it really easy to get some games installed, but one thing to note is, this does come pre-rooted, so there are a few games like Apex Legends that just won't launch on a rooted device. Heading into IDA64, as you can see, we've got 8 gigs of RAM here. We've got that RK3588 CPU. And for the GPU, we've got the Mali G610, which does offer some really great performance when it comes to one of these Android boxes or SBC powered by this chip. So they do claim that this can do 8K. Unfortunately, I don't have an 8K display, but we're going to see how it handles 4K. We'll head over to YouTube, and with this, I've got it set up so we can turn Stats for Nerds on. And we'll do two here, just to check it out. We'll do an HDR video next, because it does support HDR. 
make sure we're at 4K. And this is a true 4K display. It's a BenQ monitor. From the settings, we can go from 720 up to 4K 60 on this box itself. I didn't see an option for 8K, but like I mentioned, I don't have an 8K display to test it out with. And with all of these videos that I've tested, I get a few drop frames on the initial load in. As soon as I hit play, it does drop a few. But throughout the video, it doesn't drop any at all. When it comes to 4K video playback on the RK3588, it works absolutely amazingly. Whether you want to stream, we've got one more here, or play from an internal drive, external drive, it's really up to you. So with this here, we'll go back up to 4K. It always starts at 1440 for some reason. And as soon as I hit play on this, we got 10 drop frames. But throughout this 4K 60fps HDR video, nothing else drops at all. The next thing I like to do with these Android devices is run some benchmarks. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 5. So the single core score here I wasn't very impressed with. Only 533. Multi for these Android boxes is looking really high with a 2276. But to put this into perspective for you, the NVIDIA Shield Android TV with Geekbench 5 gets a 282 and a 947. Checking out a GPU benchmark with Wildlife, looking really great here with a 3,994. The NVIDIA Shield Android TV Pro scores around a 3,100 here with this benchmark. And the final one I tested was Antutu with a very impressive 552,975. Now when it comes to the cheaper Android TV boxes you can pick up on Amazon with the S905X3, they're anywhere from 30,000 up to around 60,000. So we've got a huge jump here on the UX, RAM, GPU, and CPU performance. Unfortunately, I've never been able to run the newer Antutu benchmark on the Nvidia Shield. It just crashes every time I try to load it up, so I'm not exactly sure what we'd score over there. So now I want to move over to some native Android gaming before we move into emulation. And like I mentioned, Apex Legends will not start because this is a rooted device. But an Xbox controller can be connected over Bluetooth and you can play any of the games from Google Play that support controllers. Here's Asphalt 9 and this is one I always like to test because it's just there on Google Play and it basically works on all devices. I've got it set to quality and we're running at full speed. Another one I always like to test is Genshin Impact, but keep in mind that this does not natively support controllers. You will need to use a third-party application to get controllers working with this on Android, or you could use a mouse and the touch screen, but it's really hard to play like this. I've got a low-medium mix going on here, and it's set at 60 FPS. I mean, it's running just fine, but I just don't have controller support. Now it's time to take a look at some emulation on this box, and first up we've got Dreamcast. I'm upscaled to 1440p using the ReDream emulator, and as long as the game's supported by this emulator, it's going to run it at full speed. I haven't had any issues with Dreamcast, so if you wanted to go ahead and use ReDream like I am here, or Flycast, these games are going to run perfectly fine. Moving over to some PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan back in 3x resolution. I tested some of the harder ones to emulate, and they run great at 3x. So when it comes to the easier to emulate stuff, there's no doubt you can go up to 6x with it. And even Chains of Olympus, 3x Vulcan runs at full speed. I also went through and tested Midnight Club, which is one I always like to test. That's another one that works well with the RK3588. So I kind of expected those two emulators to run fine along with N64, but I really wasn't expecting PS2 to run so well. Here we've got Ether SX2, Vulcan back in, 2x resolution with Gran Turismo 4, and it's running at 60. This emulator's just come such a long way in a short period of time, it's pretty amazing to see these PlayStation 2 games running in Android at full speed. Here's Soul Calibur 3, and with this one I did have to drop it down to 1x. I also tested the OpenGL back end. It seems that Vulkan does perform better on this rock chip CPU. And I'm sure you're going to run into some PS2 games that are just harder to emulate on this setup, but even God of War 2 at 1x with that Vulkan in does run pretty decently. We're not quite at a steady 60. I've seen it drop down to around 55 every once in a while. But again, no hacks, so if you did want to turn some hacks on and get a little bit of frame skip going, you'll be good to go. And the final thing I tested here for this video was the Dolphin emulator. At first, I wasn't getting great performance. There was lots of skips going on. So I ended up taking the resolution down on the box itself to 720p. 
We're at the native resolution of GameCube right now. Vulcan back in, and I enabled the multi-threader inside of the Dolphin emulator itself. That allowed me to play even a harder to emulate game at full speed. I did get a few dips here and there into the 50s, especially with Wii games, but for the most part, performance was great, and when it comes to an Android box, this is the best GameCube and Wii emulation I've seen out of an ARM chip like this. So the R58X is definitely turning out to be a powerhouse. It destroys the Nvidia Shield in raw performance on the CPU and GPU side of things. And when it comes to emulation, that CPU really does help out. I was hoping to see a little better single core performance out of this, but as you saw, it does a great job with PSP, Dreamcast, PS2, and even GameCube and Wii. It's got more than enough power to play games from Google Play as long as you can get a controller up and running. But one thing that the Shield does have over this are those OTA updates. I mean, the Shield is still being updated today. I believe it's the oldest Android device that's still being sold on the market as new that still receives updates. So there's definitely something to say for that, and this will never receive the updates that the NVIDIA Shield did, but there's a lot of tweaks that we could do to this, and I've got a few things that I will be testing out in my next video. They are releasing an Ubuntu image that we can run from the internal storage or an M.2 drive, so that's something else I'd like to test. But as it sits right now, this is a great little ARM powered device, and if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. I will have a couple more videos coming up. I'm going to install LaunchBox on this and just set it up with a ton of different emulators. We'll do a full emulation showcase, but as soon as uh, Linux is released for this, they're planning on Ubuntu and Debian, I will be testing that also. But in the meantime, if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.